Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to amend the Conway Zoning Code for the purpose of regulating accessory dwelling units. And the only guy I know that can talk about this is standing at the microphone. Now, I'm well, sure there's, there's, there's lots of people that are very passionate about housing about affordability. Let me, look. Let me look. Let me look. Well, you go ahead. Um, <laughs> So in the, currently in the in the zoning code, we have uh, recognized that there is a a loophole uh, for manager caretaker residences. The way it is defined in the zoning code, it essentially creates the ability for someone to put two housing units on any lot. Uh, the way in which this has um, mainly been been used is on um, some very high priced uh, pool houses and whatnot, but uh, when I when I realized that this provision existed, I said we we probably need to take a look at that. In '94, I'm going to assume that uh, Bill Polk, the original intent of that was for sort of uh, caretaker units for for things like self storage or for for multifamily. So uh, part of the provision is restoring it back to that to where it's uh, allowed for certain types of uses, uh, and then as a conditional use elsewhere. What this does do um, is kind of reform how they're treated, and accessory dwelling units are, are an incredibly popular thing across the United States. A lot of folks are very concerned about housing affordability, Conway included. Uh, and so a lot of ways this is treated or, or discussed as invisible density. It allows a homeowner to build a, a second very small unit on the back of their property and rent that out. So it can be used for caretaking of a family member. It can be used for housing a college student. It can be used for, for a variety of things. It has to have a relationship to the unit itself. The thing that is great about it is that when you drive down the street, it does not change the character of the way that the, when you look down the street, it, it continues to look like a single family neighborhood. It's actually returning sort of development patterns back to where they were before zoning existed, before in the 1920s and 1930s when people had uh, garage apartments and, and such uh, in the backyard. Uh, it would be limited to, essentially, you'd have to maintain permanent residence. So when you built it, you would have to sort of provide documentation that uh, you have a homestead uh, tax credit for that property. So it's not going to be for somebody that, let's say, they own uh, 50 properties across the the city and they're like i want to put an accessory dwelling unit on every single house that i have it would be limited to folks that are home uh, owner occupied uh, in that sense so if they've got an unruly tenant they're the ones that have to deal with the unruly tenant but i think in terms of the the aging population and increasing flexibility that we need to have to provide more options housing options for folks i think this is a, a really important thing a great mother-in-law quarters that's exactly what they are. Yes. I already told my kids I get a granny pod, so I'm all for it. You really believe that? Um, it's, it's, I mean, they're cut out of the wheel if I don't. Yeah, so. good luck. Yeah. We have an ordinance to read for this item. It's Ordinance 02309. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Any further discussion or questions? Mr. Garrett. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Ms. Webb? Aye. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Passes 7 0.